What if your factory floor could tell you when it was losing money? And not just when it was losing money, but why it was losing money and how to fix it. Imagine your production line running at full efficiency, no unplanned downtime, high quality, high throughput, and you know exactly where your weak spots are before they become threats. Hey there, I'm Christopher Sandoval. I'm a developer advocate here at Flowfuse, and today I'm going to show you how you can improve your overall equipment effectiveness through Flowfuse with the smart implementation of its AI empowering model context protocol. All right, are you ready? Let's dive in. So first of all, let's talk about what OEE is and why you should care. So OEE, or Overall Equipment Effectiveness, is a mathematical model. It's made up of three basic variables, availability, performance, and quality. Now availability is a calculation that basically shows you the amount of time that you're getting out of a machine versus the time that you had planned for running the machine. A high availability means you plan to use the machine a lot and you got to. A low availability meant that you had lots of plans for that machine, but you didn't get to use it. Now performance measures the actual output of the machine versus what you had planned to output. In essence, you're basically saying, yes, you can run at 500 cycles an hour, but did you actually run at 500 cycles an hour? And finally, quality is a measure of how good the things that you're producing actually are. It's a measure of the sum total defects, because it's not good enough to just produce parts. You have to produce high enough quality parts, that way you can use it in other parts of the process, or even directly sell them on. So once you have all these pieces in place, you can do the final calculation. And by multiplying all of these pieces together, you get your overall equipment effectiveness. Now the ideal dream state is 100%. And that would basically mean that your equipment is running without any downtime, without any loss, and is producing high quality parts. And to be clear, almost no system actually achieves 100%, but it's a good north star to be pointing at. The closer your OEE gets to 100%, the better your systems are being utilized, the less potential value that you're actually losing. Generally, anything above 85% is kind of the gold standard, and anything below 60% indicates that there's some sort of problem. So great, you have all of your sensor sensing, all of your records recording, and you're able to calculate your final OEE values. The big question is, why? Why is your OEE what it is? And what does it mean for your system? When you look at your body of data in your final OEE, what is it trying to tell you? Now this can be a huge challenge in making OEE really practical and useful. Barring something obvious like a machine being down, you can get lost in trying to figure out what is impacting your OEE and what this score even means. And oftentimes this can be made much more complicated because it's seldom just one thing that is failing. If you have one machine that's down, the chances are that you have other machines that have issues. And it's very rare to have a failure in a single piece of your system that doesn't then impact everything downstream. So broadly speaking, you can categorize these sort of issues as the six big losses. And that could be its entire own video, so I'll just summarize them here. Basically, the six big losses are broken into these categories. You have equipment failures, setups and adjustments, idling and minor stops, reduced speed, process defects, and reduced yield. But even categorizing all these failures into those areas is sort of a reactive approach. And what we want is something that's proactive, or at the very least something that's prescriptive. Something that we can get data from and look and say, okay, well this is the problem and this is what I need to improve. Consider something like a production flow that takes in raw steel and outputs widgets. If you have a machine that's constantly failing, well that's pretty easy to diagnose. But what if all your machines seem to be running decently well, but you're still having process defects? You're still having to toss a bunch of parts, and you have a generally low OEE score. How do you reconcile that? OEE is great, but it needs something else. And that something else is MCP and flow fees. So because Flowfuse and Node-RED are really built for these sort of industrial applications, it's a great option to resolve this issue. With the recent addition of MCP nodes, however, the game has entirely changed. For the first time, users could use their data natively within Flowfuse to inform and instruct artificial intelligence to do its work better. Now we've already done a video on what MCP is and why you should care, but I'll quickly summarize the topic here. So MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. It's an open standard that was released by Anthropic, and it's designed to allow developers to surface their tools and resources to their LLM systems. It's sort of like providing a map for your AI system. You set up some resources or tools, and then you give it a pointer in the form of a URI, or Uniform Resource Identifier, so that they can find and use them to improve their context and efficiency. From there, if you ask a question that needs a special resource or a special tool, the AI model can say, hey, you gave me something for this. 
So what does this mean practically for OEE implementations? Well, with FlowFuse, you can go from an avalanche of information to insight really easily and really quickly. To get there, you'll need to do a few things first. First of all, you need to make sure that your data sources, the sensors, PLCs, and databases that make up your data backing for your OEE calculations are well-defined in FlowFuse. From there, you can pull that data into a variety of places. For instance, you could bring in data from your sensors and store them in a table. You can bring in things like machine tolerances or uptime expectations and specify them as arrays in your FlowFuse instance. What we're basically doing here is defining the resources part of the MCP equation to make sure that the AI has access to the context and information it needs. Next, we need to make sure that the tools or actions that the system needs are also defined. Once you have both the resources and tools defined, you can then connect your AI agent to those systems. You can use the native MCP server on FlowFuse and then something like VS Code to connect directly to the agent. And from there, you can ask a question. You can ask something like, what's the worst performing machine on this line in the last 12 hours? You can ask something like, which machine is trending towards failure? Why? And when is the optimal time to pull that machine to do maintenance? This is an insight and management super machine. And it's one that can make your overall system better, safer, and more efficient. It's literally a cheat code for improving your OEE and your operational realities. Now, in order to build this out, I'm going to assume that you have a few things in place already. First, I'm going to assume that you have all of your data feeding into some sort of database. I'm also going to assume that you already have an OE dashboard set up. Now, if you don't have this dashboard set up, there's good news. If you create a new instance, we provide a bunch of pre-built flows that you can use as a starting point for your Node-RED instance. And one of those pre-built flows is actually an OE dashboard. Now this dashboard is going to include a lot of simulated data, but you can swap it in for your own databases and your own systems. Now, assuming that you have all of this in place, the next thing you need to do is build out your MCB tools and resources. So when it comes to setting something like this up, there's three nodes you're going to have to become familiar with. The first one is MCP response. Now this node is very, very simple. All this does is basically set the output of the MCP tool or resource flow. It just allows the server to actually get the data back. The next node you'll have to become familiar with is the MCP resource node. In order to use this node, you're going to have to set up the server. Now I've already set up the server, but I'll show you what it looks like in our configuration. You can see this is very simple. We basically just have a name, the protocol, and then the path. And you wanna make sure that your path ends with forward slash MCP. Next, you need to give your resource an ID and a URI, and the URI will be defined by what you're actually surfacing. Now, in addition to resources, you can actually define tools, and you'll do this with the MCP tool node. Now the MCP tool node requires a little bit more than the resource node. In this case, you're going to define the server, the tool name, and the title, but you also need to pass a description to the MCP server. The MCP server doesn't actually know what these tools do unless you provide this description, and then the input schema will help structure the query and then ultimately the response. So let me show you what this looks like in practice. Now in this case, we have a singular MCP tool and a singular resource. Now the resource side of this is actually pretty simple. It's essentially just an array that we're passing to the system. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is just simulated data, but ideally this should be your entire spec sheet broken down into referenceable objects. Here's our MCP tool called get all data. The way it's structured is to provide the service through the my node red MCP server with the tool name get all data. And we're specifically giving it the description retrieve all production and downtime data with an optional limit. And by providing this description, that makes sure that the MCP server knows what this thing actually does. From here, we're running into a function node that basically just queries the entire database. And then that function node is feeding into the database node itself. As you can see, that function node is going to push the query to our database node. And then at the end of this flow, we have the MCP response node. I've also connected a debug node here just to make sure that things are working the way that they should. Connecting a debug node like this is optional, but it really helps with development and with troubleshooting. So now that we have all this set up, we need to actually connect our agent to the service itself. Now I already have my MCP server set up, but I'll walk you through the process just so you see what it looks like. You're going to start by typing in MCP and going to add server. You're going to select HTTP and you're going to insert the URL of your instance. Now when you hit enter, it's going to ask you to give a server ID. And once you have this set up, you can actually manage your MCP server. So if you go to list servers, you can see that I already had this server set up. Let's go ahead and start it. Here we can see that the server has connected and has discovered a single tool. And now we can make specific queries by asking the agent to connect directly to that tool. Now here you can see the tool retrieving all of this data. And now that we have the model connected to all of this data, we can ask even more complicated questions.
And as you can see, the model can actually generate its own tools, its own systems, to do even more complex operations. And you can generate pretty complex systems both for particular problems and also for overall management and visibility. Now, as with any system, you can get this wrong. So it's best to ensure that you adhere to a few best practices. Now, these best practices are going to change from org to org, but the following are some good standards to apply. So firstly, you need to ensure that your variables are assigned correctly. OEE is a cumulative calculation, and that means that a bunch of other calculations need to happen first before you even get to the final one. And any misstep in that earlier process is going to make the rest of your data dirty or unreliable. So you need to make sure that you're doing everything you can to make your data as good as it can be. And that includes things like making sure that you have reasonable expectations for runtime for machines, that you're adhering to specifications, that you're using real data for availability, and so on. Second, you need to make sure that you're tagging maintenance and downtime appropriately and accurately. There is a possibility that you could generate a feedback loop, and that if you take down a machine for maintenance and then you don't properly report that as maintenance, then your OEE calculation might show that as unplanned maintenance. And then you'll say, oh, well, those systems need to be pulled for maintenance. And then before you know it, you're just stuck in the cycle. So make sure that you're tagging those sort of variations. That way you don't get into a cascade failure. Third, you need to make sure that you're rolling this process out gradually. Now, OEE is already a complex system, but when you're injecting AI and MCP into that, it gets even more complicated. So make sure that you're rolling this out into a small segment first, maybe a section of a production line. Pick a segment or a group of machines and roll it out there. And then once you validated that this is actually getting the right data and that it's clean and it's working, you can scale it out to more systems. Now, a really big point here, don't forget your dashboards. Look, not everyone is going to be textual. Some people are visual learners. And this system is really easy to use and gives you a ton of insight, but it's only going to be as valuable as people are willing to use it. So make sure that you back up the system with dashboard reporting. That way you can get a visual representation of what's happening and some visual context for the textual output without putting all of your eggs in one bag. And finally, remember that humans make mistakes. Now, I'm not saying that AI or the MCP system is human, but a human did build it, and a human's going to integrate it. And the model itself is not perfect. So whatever you get from the system could be 100% true, or it can have things like misunderstandings and hallucinations and missed context. So make sure you validate before you act on anything. The worst case scenario is that you waste a little bit of time verifying something that is true. And the best case scenario is that you catch a huge error in logic before you implement a massive sweeping change. So there you have it, a clean, practical, and effective way to leverage FlowFuse's AI and MCP implementation to make your OEE calculation as good as it can be, and to give you better insights into making your system as good as it can be. Now, if you're ready to move away from just tracking your OEE to actually using it, this is a super powerful implementation pathway. If you're not already on FlowFuse, you can head to flowfuse.com for a free 14-day trial, and you can even use our OEE blueprint to get started right away. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a like, comment, or subscribe. This has been Christopher Sandwall. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.